Hello everybody, welcome to At Home with Sky F1. I hope you're all staying safe and staying at home during the coronavirus. Remember, there's loads of tasks that you can get on with to keep yourself busy during this time. Anyway, in the efforts to keep you entertained, all us presenters have gone back over the last eight years of Sky F1 and tried to pick our four favourite features. I'm going to take you back, first of all, to 2014 and the American Grand Prix, myself and Johnny, and quite an entrance. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely oh. awesome. That's one way to beat oh. customs. I'm used to man and machine, but that was absolutely man against nature. Brilliant. Oh. Absolutely brilliant. Stuff. Welcome to the US Grand Prix. We are going to begin to act beginning today to do whatever needs to be done. Let's get on with the job. While we breathe, we hope. The world has turned over in it. And to transform the history of man. Either the will or the skill to fight. There is nothing new, only different. Never forget this. The future is to those who take it. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the heart. That was one of the most exhilarating experiences I've ever had. The second most exhilarating experience I've had during my time on Sky F1 was back in Sochi in 2016 at the Olympic bobsleigh run. Two thousand feet above the main track here in Sochi lies a track of a different type. Scenes to the 2014 Winter Olympics. Today, a chosen few are going to get the opportunity to hurtle down that track with the Russian bobsleigh team. This is definitely one to tick off the list. And this is the baby that we're going to be getting into. Danny. It won't be getting in because it's on the eve of the Russian Grand Prix, so he's left it to me and his trainer to take his part in the Russian four-man bob. Lifetime's ambition. What am I doing? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Go to the paddock like that. I think I should. I've got to just <laughs> yeah. do that, don't you? Just if you get to the side of this problem. <laughs> This is Danny's trainer. Attention. Next Him and me with the Russian, Russian four-man bob. You ready? Next front. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Do that. Do that. 
Try again here. Cozy. Again. This guy's a nuts up. Oh, unbelievable. That is unbelievable. One of the best things I've ever done in my life. It gets quicker and quicker and quicker, as you can imagine. And by the end, it, you know, you don't know, because you don't know the track, you don't know which way it's going. Exactly. exactly. So the helmet was just going bang, 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 bang. And you just think, if you went over at that pace. <laughs> Danny, I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, you send your trainer down, you send Muggins here down. What was it? I mean, too frightened or was it insurance? I think. Uh... This costume looks much better on you than on myself. <laughs> I was going to say, this is the first interview I've actually conducted in spandex. <laughs> so, yeah, um, just keep your eyes up. Keep your eyes up. Yeah, I'd say. yeah, I, I have to. I have no other choice. <laughs> um, listen, your, your, your home Grand Prix, um, it must be so special coming back here. Yeah, it's always easy, you know. Obviously, it would be strange if I wouldn't get more attention than usual here. And actually, I do. I feel it. There's plenty of cameras, plenty of interviews, uh, and hopefully a lot of people on grandstands, as it has been last couple of years. A lot of Russian flags, a lot of people supporting me, and also other guys, you know, which is very important uh, for the sport interest, so it's, it's quite cool. I know your dad's here as well. Will all the family be coming down? Uh, my father and grandfather, and uh, it's enough. Well, you didn't do anything wrong in China, did you? Well, Sebastian Vettel said you did, but you stood up to him, and I think that's what people um, really got behind you for. Of course, it's good to talk the opinions out after the race, especially when the emotions are still there, you know, it's good to discuss. Uh, everyone gave their point of view. Obviously, I think my point of view is right and everything, uh, but uh, I think we treated each other with respect, and uh, we've always been treating each other with respect, so... Uh, I think uh, now it's history and we're just focused on the next race, which is here. Yeah, it's heat at the moment. You, you say it's heat at the moment, would you? Uh, from what you're saying, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and some other people, I guess. Uh, I guess it's good when people also see us in a bit different state, you know, when we tell to each other the truth, uh, tell to each other uh, our points of view and opinions, sometimes especially in situations uh, uh, when it's getting a bit heated up. Um, but I think it's, it's a good thing and uh, we and we move forward. Yeah, but if it was the same position again, you'd do exactly the same thing. Of course, <laughs> yes. Good man, good man, stick it up for yourself. What's the personal goal this year? I mean, we're seeing consistency from your teammates. Um, we've seen flashes from yourself. How much pressure do you feel under um, from the guys in Toro Rosso? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, I've spent uh, one year, I think, yeah, with Toro Rosso, and uh, I think uh, it was a great school. Uh, and uh, of course, now, you know, I just keep doing my job as good as I know how to do it. Uh, start was again not so consistent, but it looks like now I'm feeling more and more comfortable in the car. And so far, after a podium uh, in China, I feel more confident than ever. And uh, we'll be moving, hopefully, many races like this to come. And then, uh, regardless of anything, I think doing this kind of job, you are in a pretty good position. Okay. So the target is to beat Danny Rick, yeah? I think it should be targeted anyway. It's to beat everyone, and uh, Daniel is one of them. So you yes. did it last year. Yeah, in a way, yes. So. So, yeah, I didn't see any reason why I can give it a go another. Good luck for the rest of the season. I I'm, yeah, I'm going to get out of this. It's Thanks, man. It looks cold. good on you As again. you can yes. probably <laughs> tell. <laughs> yes, it is cold. <laughs> Odd end to that story, of course. 2016 Russian Grand Prix was one where Danny Fiat went into the back of Sebastian Vettel just three days after that shoot, and that was to prove to be the end of his Red Bull career. I'm sorry about that, Danny. Anyway, we get some great opportunities in this job to get driven round by experienced racing professionals. The first one I got was in 2012 with Lewis Hamilton at Donsfold. The next feature is a toss up between that and 2018 Rioja with Fernando Alonso. I'm going with 2018 and the legend that is Fernando Alonso. Daddy. Hello. Morning. Morning. Cold enough for you? Very cold, very cold. <laughs> How many laps do I get for five euros? Uh, I think one corner, two corners. <laughs> Euro a lap? Uh, yeah, I think a little bit more than that, but uh, we will do a special price for you. All right, good, special price. Come on, let's yeah, All right. Woo. Now, no helmet, yeah? No helmet. So I have a, a wife and two young children. <laughs> Come on, 
So he hit his left, I guess? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's just winging it. It's like a Sunday afternoon drive. Jesus, it's moving around all over the place. Oh! Nice way to get the adrenaline going in the morning, eh? Yes. Right, I better start asking you some random questions now. Do you think you can concentrate on two things at once? Uh, I hope you can. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Oh, you are joking me. Oh, you're joking me. This was fast. That was pretty fast. <laughs> what about the girlfriend? Did you just hand her the keys at the start of the year and say, I'll see you in November? <laughs> no, I think she's, she's happy when I'm happy. So I think she will travel to, to many races with me. So I think we will, we will be OK. I was looking up a list of the top 10 coolest Spanish people, right? OK. At the moment, you're not on it. The Cervantes, what? Hernan Cortez, yes. David De Gea. OK. I mean, what do you think about this? Why is this just you not won a championship for a while? Uh, probably that, that's the reason why, you know, we need to win a championship soon. Hopefully that will, will put me on that list. Back on the cool list, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Have you ever thought about <laughs> taking up fishing? Uh, no, no, never. <laughs> Two for us, Junior. Yes, yes. <laughs> what do you do outside of this that's leisurely? Every day I try to do this, you know. This is part of my life and what I like to do, so... As long as I have the choice, you know, I will keep doing this. You know? I don't know what a punter would pay for this. Probably a couple of hundred grand, but I've been looking forward to this for ages. What's Zach like as a boss? Uh, he's a, a cool boss. I think uh, he's very open to new ideas. He's always... Uh, uh, quite happy to try different things with the team, with the marketing side, try to help the drivers. What's he like as a driver? I don't know. I think uh, I need to do some laps with him, actually, and uh, I will evaluate after that. What's your motivation now, right? You've achieved two world titles. Surely you must believe, Jesus. Surely you must believe that one more is possible with this collaboration. I think the combination McLaren and Renault that has been my two teams in, in my career, the, the, my two loves at the same time. So uh, I think this combination is, is great for me and a huge motivation this year, especially after the, the difficulties we went through. Let's go close to the wall. Oh! <laughs> okay, finally, best part of your job. Best oh! The best part of my job is this, you know, to scare people. Uh, the best part of my job. Thanks, man. You didn't scare me. I think we're done. Yes. Fernando Alonso, what an amazing driver he is. I'll never forget that day. I really won't. But I'm going to save the best till last. A few years ago, Tokyo again with my good friend Johnny Herbert and with the drivers Lance Troll and Felipe Massa and their time at Williams around Tokyo and the most dangerous karting I've ever undertaken. Right, oh. Simon, I think we have a little mission on our hands. Good. You ready for a race? A bit of Tokyo drifting. Let's go. Go, 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 Donkey Kong. Right. Look where you're going, Stroll. I'm looking right in my mirror. This is not going to end well. Watch <laughs> out, Trot, Trot, Trot. Yeah, no, he's got a monster engine. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Game over. Oh, got... Game over. <laughs> Tokyo drag race. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see it. Yeah. Not creeping forward. Yours is I'm watching that. Oh, no! Oh. He's gone again. <laughs> Show off. I'm getting angry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is the turn. Ah, you have to the turn. turn. I'm I'm racing. Racing. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, God, it 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 well, a lung full of exhaust fumes, but we're still breathing.
I can't quite believe it or believe how, but uh, yeah. We survived. <laughs> we survived. We survived. Good yeah. fun. <laughs> Let's start large with yourself. 15 races into your, your fledgling F1 career. Uh, how are you finding it? How are you enjoying the experience? It's been a, a pretty incredible journey so far. Uh, first year in Formula One, traveling the world, and uh, I've really been enjoying every minute of it. Every weekend uh, is a very, very, very special uh, year for me. And is it being brilliant driving next to this man because the experience that Felipe's got is something that you can sort of really take from. Has he been sort of nice to you, helped you through this? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, I mean, just like we saw on the Mario Kart. Yes. I think it's been been a decent year between the two of us. Um, you know, we, we both want the best for the team and, and I think uh, we're, we're both in very different positions in our career and uh, we motivate the, the both of us to to get as far up the grid as possible to, to score as many points. When you talk to Lance, what's the kind of things that you, you can share and talk about? Well, I think everything, uh, even comparing the, the, you know, my data with his data. So you see that maybe it's a corner that uh, one driver is doing different than the other driver. So sometimes he asks me, what are you doing here? So using whatever gears, you're braking whatever way. And uh, even the race I didn't do, I call him. I said, listen, be careful with the tires. So, and I listened. Uh, and he didn't listen. <laughs> he didn't listen to me. And then after the race, he said, ah, maybe I'm supposed to, to take out a little bit more of the tires. I, I told you, I call me, man. I call you, man, you know, to tell you. Lars, would you like to see Felipe alongside you next season? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think Felipe is showing this year um, that he's still, still on top of his, his form. He's still scoring points. And, and for sure, he shows that he's, he's still very competitive. And I think especially with these new cars and these new rules. And our relationship off the track is, has also been, been really good this year. Oh, you could so, see. So. When are we going to get an announcement about what you're going to be doing next year? What are your options and how likely is it you think that you're going to be staying with the team? The team is uh, taking a little bit of time to decide. It's, it's true that, I mean, the financial situation is not really on the top. I am a professional driver and I will always be, you know, uh, and I think what I work for the team, I give my best, but I think I need to be also uh, respect right. in the way I, I am, you know, in the way I was always in my career. Thanks, guys. Should we get the bus back? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>